GCSE Economics video by Mr. Goff at mrgoff.com. In today's video, we'll be talking about diseconomies of scale as well as external economies of scale. In an earlier video, we spoke about the benefits of economies of scale to larger firms, but it's not always positive. Sometimes they can also be diseconomies of scale. In a large organisation, communication may become more difficult. It may take longer for information to pass either up or down the chain. This can make larger organisations seem unresponsive and slow to adapt to changes. Often in larger corporations, the only form of communication with people's seniors is through written communication and employees may be less likely to pass on information than if they were to have face-to-face -face contact with their superiors. As companies grow, the number of people that each manager supervises also grows. Workers may feel isolated, they may feel underappreciated, and they may become less productive as a result. Also, with decreased supervision, we may see a drop in productivity as workers are not inclined to work as hard as they might otherwise do. Sometimes as firms grow larger, managers of individual departments may lose sight of the overall company goals. This could lead to them making decisions that while good for their own individual department, have a negative effect on other aspects of the business. It is often thought that just introducing machines is bound to have a positive effect on production. But this is not always the case if we don't take great care when we introduce these machines. We need to make sure that the output from one section of the process matches the amount of input that can be handled by the next. If we introduce machines to one part, it could be that that produces more output than we can handle, leading to what's known as a production bottleneck. If this happens, the firm will have wasted the extra money that they've spent because they won't be actually producing any additional output because of the bottleneck in their production line. So you can see now from these previous examples that the businesses need to be very careful when they scale up production to avoid diseconomies of scale and be able to take advantage of those economies of scale we talked about earlier. Next, we're going to talk about external economies of scale. These differ from internal economies of scale in a couple of key ways. The first, they're outside the control of the business. The business can't decide whether or not to implement them. The second is that they're available to all firms in an industry or location, regardless of their size. This is very different to internal economies of scale, which are achieved by growing in size. The external economies we're going to look at include improved infrastructure, education and training facilities, concentration of firms, and location. We'll talk more about these in the next couple of minutes. Improvements to the transport networks in a country, such as road, rail, airports, and ports, can help to reduce transport costs for firms, making them more competitive. The development of a new industry in a region or country can often bring with it associated improvements in infrastructure that benefit other firms within that community. In the modern age, governments also recognise the importance of improving the communication infrastructure. Things like high-speed broadband can bring great efficiency benefits to the businesses in a country. The ability to partner with universities for research projects that would be otherwise unobtainable to small and medium firms gives them a massive edge. Many high-tech firms have been attracted to the UK due to its world-leading educational facilities at Cambridge and Oxford. Many firms operate on what is referred to as a just-in-time basis. This means instead of keeping large amounts of supplies on hand, they like to receive their supplies just as they need them in small but regular quantities. In order to support this need, suppliers will often locate themselves very close to their main customers. This is particularly useful where inputs would be heavy and expensive to transport. This can be seen in areas such as mining, where the processing plants for the ore that is extracted 
are located very close to where the ore is extracted from. In Sunderland, the Nissan car plant that operates with a just-in-time policy has some of its suppliers located actually within its premises. Others are located in a nearby business park built especially to support it. Some locations become synonymous with the industries that are there, such as Silicon Valley with the tech industry or London and Zurich with financial industries. By grouping together, like-minded firms are able to benefit from shared expertise and opportunities for collaboration. The Silverstone Technology Park and wider Silverstone Technology Cluster are a development that arose out of firms that support the high-tech Formula One racing industry coming together in the one location. This has seen them joined by aerospace and medical firms who share similar technical requirements. So that now rounds off our investigation of economies of scale. In summary, here's a few things to remember. You could be asked about the importance of economies of scale to a firm, in which case you need to make sure your argument continues until you say how it affects their profits. Alternately, you could be asked how economies of scale will affect a region or a country. In this case, you need to make sure that you carry on until you explain how it will affect the lives of the citizens of that region or country. It's important to ensure you know the ways that diseconomies can occur so that you can balance out any argument you have to make. Finally, remember that if you're asked to evaluate the importance of economies of scale, you're not being asked to say, will it be more likely they will see diseconomies or economies, but rather make both arguments and say, if they are able to succeed in achieving this, while managing these diseconomies, then it will be of benefit. However, if the diseconomies get out of control, it may not be. And so we come to the end of another GCSE economics video. I hope you learned a little bit more about economies of scale. It's bye for now, and I hope to see you again soon for another GCSE economics video here at mrgoff.com with me, Mr. Goff.